Ethan, it's love. How are you? All right, dear. What about you? I'm doing good. Good. Stand by for me for the broadcast. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Mrs. G. Good morning to you. And you know, like we always do, we give God all the praise, honor, and glory for allowing us to be in your ear listening presence. I thank him so much for this opportunity. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 9.11. Um, it reads, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happened to them all. All right, Miss G, what you think? Well, Minister Love, I truly believe that the scriptures let us know that God has no favor over one status, over one group of people. Just because somebody has something, don't mean that you can't have it regardless if you're not as smart as they are, if you're not as fast as they are, don't mean that you cannot win a race. See, because wisdom plays a part in God's favor is a part of all of us. So we all have a chance to uh, be successful, to succeed in, in some things that as long as God has his hands in it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I look at it as... Um, the time piece, the time piece, meaning that the time changes things, things happen. We can do everything right, the right way. We can be educated. We we can go fast and, um, you know, just feel like we're doing everything in the right direction. But no matter what we do, um, there's still time and chance, uh, you know, and, and those events that happen, we can't stop change them. We can't stop them from overriding what we have already put into action. And so um, we we just have to continue to push and have faith. I, I think that's the piece right there, having faith that knowing that whatever it is, um, God is going to make sure that we have what we deserve as long as we have the faith and continue to work. The, and, and that's what I get out of it. I know a lot of people, when they say this, this scripture, um, they give you the, the uh, illusion that it means to keep pushing. It, it doesn't, he doesn't give it to the, the swift and, and, and you know, um, he doesn't give it to those who um, are, are knowledgeable, you're wise and, and, and understanding and what. But and then it makes you think that. But if you keep moving, you're gonna have what you're reaching for. That's the that's the way we always. I know that I always interpret this scripture when people be talking to me and say, "Well, the race is not always given to the swift," you know. But yeah, but what this scripture is saying really that you can put everything into it, and then even something may happen that it may change the outcome for you. But we have to have faith that God is going to see um, it through, going to reward us as long as we have that faith and we continue to work. 
Um, what you what did you think, Miss Miss G, about this scripture before we um got on it today? Well, I always felt like that uh, men do not uh, have control over the outcome of nothing. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like whatever the outcome is, it's because God had his hands in it. See, because sometimes we want things that are not for us. And when we do not get it, then we have a tendency of feeling like we didn't succeed instead of looking at it on, on the other hand when that wasn't what God wanted us to have. Mm -hmm. See, because man don't have control over the outcome. Man only has control over his part and he plays and doing whatever, whatever it is, his part. And if he wins or lose, he, if he don't have the outcome. He, he can't control it. Right. We don't have no control over nothing on this earth. God has control over all things. We're just uh, contenders. We're just in the race because we put ourselves in the race. But at the end of the race, God has the last say so. Right. And, and that's the whole thing I was reading. It was saying um, swiftness or speed or strength, wisdom, discernment or brilliance and learning. None of these things help help us figure out what is out of our control. So we can do everything that we feel is right, but there are just some things that are out of our control. And, and it, said, it goes on to say, relying on these to make sense of our life will result in doubt and fear. Um, personal skills only last as long as life does. So we got to remember that even though we can do all the right things, there are just some things that are out of our control. Some things are just not going to happen the way we plan them to happen. So we do have to remain faithful and, and what God will do in the, in the end of what was coming in the outcome. Uh, if that makes sense to you guys, we, we, we can't always control the outcome. Some things are just not going to be um, in our favor the way we want. And so I, 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 when I, when this, this, I don't know why this scripture came to me early this morning, early this morning came to me and, um, you know, I just had to, had to, to, to say something because, um, even in Matthew and it talks about, um, enduring to the end, um, and then you'll be saved. I, I, you know, I just really feel that, um, as long as we continue to push, and I think that was the title. We're going to continue to push and we're going to continue to have faith. We're not going to stop doing what we're supposed to be doing, but we're going to trust God and we're going to have the faith that everything that we're doing will end um, in favorable outcome. What you say, Miss G? I agree with that, uh, Miss Love. And we have to remember that uh, there are no losers in the race. Mm -hmm. In Christ God, like you said earlier, you know, regardless of what we think we're going to do, even if we don't succeed, we still have to have faith that God took it upon himself to control the uh, the end of the race, the end of whatever we thought we were going to do. Our outcome did not it change, but we have to remember that God has the last say so. So we still have to have faith in God. We can't afford to lose our faith. In the Lord God, who has given us everything, who has put us here, who has uh, provided for us everything that we ever had. I don't care what it is that we have, God provided it and he allowed us to be here to do and say whatever. So we have to keep the faith in Christ and know that he's going to pick it up. And as long as we continue to move and go towards the cross, and he's going to continue to provide for us. He's going to continue to look out for us. And we have to remember that. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And so that's the main thing. Um, I, I just think that th a lot of times this scripture, this particular scripture, um, gets gets misconstrued. Um, and, and, and like I said, it was with me cause I was like, yeah, if I just keep moving, I keep moving. I ain't gotta be fast with it. I don't have to be swift. I don't have to, you know, know everything. Um, you know, because that ain't how I'm gonna receive my reward. If I just keep, keep enduring to the end, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get what I'm looking for. And it's not necessarily so because time and chance may prevent me from getting the outcome that I desire, 
but I have faith that I am going to get the best outcome because I always remember that I was told that my future is going to be better than my past. My right now is nothing compared to what my future or my tomorrow is going to bring me. So I still have that in my mind that I have a promise of a more prosperous future. And, 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 and so as long as I keep the faith and I continue to be obedient, I keep moving and keep pressing, everything is just going to be all right. I believe everything's going to work out in our favor. What you say, Miss G? I believe everything is working out in our favor. And I truly believe that because you don't be number one, if you just because you don't come to the finish line first, mm -hmm. that you are still a winner. Mm -hmm. Because you continue to move, you continue to run, you continue to push. Mm -hmm. So you're still a winner, even though you don't become first at the finish line. Even if you become last and you continue to go till you get to the finish line, you are still a winner. Absolutely. God has a purpose in your life. Absolutely. And we're going to face we're gonna face some some obstacles. You're gonna have boundaries and, and through life. And you could be doing everything perfectly. And I don't know if y'all realize this. I know I have, but a lot of times you the more and more you say you're gonna do right by God, you're gonna be obedient. That's when the enemy attacks the hardest, right? That's when you, you're like, God, what is going on? I'm doing everything you asked me to do. And it just, the, the rocks just keep coming against me. I'm getting hit with boulders and, and stuff like that. But that's what happens when, when the enemy is trying to stop you and trying to get you back over to his side. He will come to you at every angle that he, that's possible. He's going to come every angle. So we're really pushing and pressing and, and having the faith that God is going to protect us. And he will. He will. But I know when I, I mean, when I um declared that I was going to do what God asked me to do, what he called me to do, because I'm telling y'all, y'all know me. I was like, Lord, I know good and well. You ain't calling me to preach. <laughs> I was like, I know not. You know, I'm making up my own Bible scriptures. I know not that you're calling me. And, um, but when I decided that I was going to be obedient to God, that's when all the attacks started. That's when all the attacks started. I mean, uh, you know, people in, in church didn't want to hear anything I had to say because uh, they didn't believe that I was called, but it wasn't for them to believe. It was for me to answer the call. And it took a long time for them to take me seriously, right? But I didn't let that stop me because I really, I'm going to be honest with y'all, I really didn't care what they thought about me. I was like, if you only knew what I went through to get to this point, to where I can stand before you and get a word of God, you wouldn't care either. Because I'm telling you guys, I had when I was ignoring the Lord, I had a cloud. I had a weight on my back so hard heavy and it wasn't that I was stressed I had no reason to be stressed I was fine everything was fine in my life you know because when you actually out there in the world you seem like it seems like everything be fine for real I'm telling you so I had a weight I couldn't understand and then until I you know talked to my grandmother and I was like grandma this is this and this and this and she told me what I needed to do and I was on all look all fours I was on all fours y'all I was on that flow crying and that weight was so heavy until I was like, Lord, I, I, I surrender. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. And when I tell you that weight lifted up off my back, I'm, it could have been a movie scene, y'all. It could have been a movie scene. I was pressed down and the Lord relieved that weight when I agreed out of my mouth to do what he asked me to do. And that is the truth. If the truth was ever the truth. And so. I wasn't going to let man. Intimidate me. Because of what they thought. I should be doing. Okay. So I, I just want to say with that. We got to keep pushing. 
And we got to keep having faith. And we got to keep following God and believing that where he's God in us, through the Holy Spirit, where he's God in us, is where we're supposed to be. Okay? That's what we have to believe. That that's where we're supposed to be. I, 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 um... We got a few seconds. Oh, matter of fact, it's time to go. But listen, God loves you. I love you. Make sure you love yourself. Go on and love someone else properly. Till we shall meet again, may God bless you real good. And make sure you continue to press and have faith. Thank you, Mr. Easton. God bless you, sir. God bless you also, uh, Minister Love. And thank you. Miss G. Mm -hmm. Okay, Girl, so okay. wait a minute. We still we, we hold on. Wait a minute, hold on. We on live on Facebook before you mm, get into that. So go right ahead. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> what you say? We we on live. Yeah, we on live. Girl, that was a testimony. I tell you. And it was true. I'm not, I wouldn't dare say that it wasn't. It was but true. Was and I know, but you know what? Most ministers, that most people that God calls, don't go into it easy. Because we're normally doing something that we have no business doing. When he calls, you know, he always calling on the center because you have a testimony. It, people that have never done nothing and been into nothing and seen nothing and ain't been nowhere, they ain't done nothing. They don't have nothing to show for those that are sinners to let them know why they, how God called them off the street or, you know, out of the club and drugging and drinking. Hey, you have, when God calls, you know, the Bible tells us that God, God calls the sinners. Mm -hmm. and he uses the sinners. You know, sinners know how to talk to sinners. Absolutely. Absolutely. A person that they never see it. Mm -hmm. what, are they, what are they gonna say to a sinner? How are you gonna encourage somebody that's been out there having a hard life to come in when you been living the perfect life of a king or a queen? And, you and have nothing to draw. And what? that that's the that's the whole thing right there. Um what you said without experience, a lot of times you're giving textbook answers. Test book answers. And so you have to um, to reach the people, you reach them better when you have their experience. You know, that's why I use transparency. God knew I was going to use transparency. You know, I don't know anything else but to use myself as an example. You know, so um, you're right. You, when you have been through something, you can talk about it. And you can talk about it with, with feeling. You know, I can teach about um, those fornications and 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 extramarital affairs and and um manipulation and all that stuff. I can teach all that because I lived it. I, I've done it. You know, um, I, the ins and outs. You know, so it's easy for me to teach it. I I, I can teach it. I just like I can go teach about law enforcement to a certain extent. You know, a certain point. Um, so it's like when you live this thing, when you experience it, you can teach it better. People can feel it. They can feel that you know what you're talking about. But when you go stand in front of somebody from a textbook point of view, cause you done got your doctorate and you, you this and that, and, but you don't know a bit more how the experience feel. People can see that too. People oh, yeah. People That's can like a rich too. man telling a poor man he understands what being poor is. You've never been poor, so you don't understand what, what it feels like to be poor. You have no idea how hungry people feel. You have no idea what people go through, why people rob, steal. You have no idea because you've never been there. You've never had to do it. So you can't give the experience of a person that's going through something. You need somebody that has gone through something or going through something to explain to you why things are happening the way they're happening. Let me tell you something. You are so right. I remember um, how easy it was for me to tell people that God will provide. It, it, oh, it was so easy for me to say, God will provide. Just trust God. He will provide, right? So easy. 
uh, um, until I had to trust God and wait for him to provide. Now, I know you know this is true. Um, when I had to retire, when they made me retire, I wasn't ready to quit my job. I wasn't ready to be a 42-year-old retiree. I wasn't ready for that. But, you know, thank God it was a blessing in disguise. But the thing was, I had to retire. These people said I had to go. I had to go. And I had to trust God because not only did I have to retire, I was hurting. I had just had two surgeries and had one in waiting. And these people wanted me to go work. Where, where I'm going to work with a surgery pending, you know. And so I had to trust God that he was going to ensure that my checks, my bills were paid um, some way or another. And let me tell you, I couldn't do nothing but trust him. That was all I could do. And, and then it was a, a refund check from all the money I had put into my disability. It was checks coming through the mail from this organization. It was people bringing me money that I had lent, you know, to them in the past and stuff like that. And even though it didn't come the way I was used to it coming every payday, it came. But guess what? It made me better equipped to tell somebody God will provide. It made me better equipped to say, trust God, because I had experienced it. See, at first I was teaching it, but I hadn't experienced that type of trust when you don't know where your next meal coming from. But when I experienced it, because see, my retirement didn't kick off right when they made me retire. I had to wait a while to get my money. And so when I experienced it, I could honestly say, hey, you trust God. It's going to work out for your good. You know, and, and, I, and I truly believe it because I know it to be so. Come on, Miss G, jump in here. I understand exactly what you're saying, those level people. Just so you know, some people want to know well, why is it that you uh feel like you can tell somebody to trust God when you do things that everybody else is doing? Well, I'd like to answer that question. Because you know that none of us are perfect. None of us are always going to do the right thing. Don't you know when a pastor stand in the pulpit and preach that he and read the word of God? that he's also learning, that he's also hearing the word that he's preaching, that he also is working towards the goal of getting closer to God. We're not perfect people. So when the word of God is being read, the man of God that's reading the word of God, I say it that way because everybody in the pulpit are not men and women of God. Some people just take it on as a job, some people do it because they think it makes them uh, blend in with the community and, and people on another level. You know, people have their reasons. And I'm not saying who these people are. I don't know. But I know they exist. But the man of God also needs to hear the word of God. So when he reads the word of God, trust me, God is also giving him a word because we all have to learn, and nobody can go through this, just sit down and tell you, I know this whole Bible, every word that it says, I understand it. Because if you, if you knew the word of God, you would never have to open the Bible to tell somebody else what the word is saying. Every word. Word for word, my baby. So, you know, we all need to hear it, because preachers have their own ministers. We all need to try to follow as close as we possibly can to the word of God, but the devil is also going to tempt us. So nobody is perfect. So when you point your fingers at me or somebody else, remember that there's a finger also pointing back at you because nobody is perfect. So we just have to trust, have faith, and believe that God is going to cover us. That's why he forgives us for our sins, and that's why we ask him daily to forgive us. Yeah, we have to trust in the Lord with all our heart and know that he's going to forgive us as long as we have faith and believe in him. We have to believe that his son died for a cause so that we will have life and have it more abundantly. And yes, listen to those who have been through something 
Because if they haven't been through what you've been through or something close to it, they don't know how to tell you how to get out of it. Well, one thing that's factual that you said, we are all flawed. We are all flawed. No, no, nobody is perfect. Um, some of us, though, um, we we go into things knowing that is wrong. Um, and I'm talking about preachers and, and men and women of God. We, we go into things knowing that it's not right. And, and that's a totally different thing. Um, I think, but nobody's perfect. We all sin. We all sin. We come short of the, of the glory. Um, I, I just feel like at some point you have to think about what you're doing. You know, it, it's not feasible for for me to go out here and 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 mess with somebody's. And I always use relationships because y'all know I love the men. So it's not feasible. For me to go out here and mess up somebody's marriage, you know what I'm saying? That that's a little bit more being flawed. That that's 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 really just intentionally sinning. I know that it's wrong, and um, I, I should really definitely think twice before I decide to make all these steps to do that, and vice versa. Whether it's a male or female, whatever you're doing, uh, if you're interrupting the holy matrimony of someone. Um, that's not a, a a mistake. That's not being flawed. That's not a just happened. That that it just happened. You know that took some time, some planning, some manipulation. You know um, of of time, and it took some. You know it took some things to do all that. It took a lot of, enough time for you to say, you know what, this is wrong. And I I, I to me that's unexcusable. And I mean, if you just going to do it, just admit to it that you was low down, dirty enough to do it, and you did it. But it, that, that I wouldn't consider to be flawed. Now, um, no, I'm not perfect. You know, my way of thinking isn't perfect all, all the time, you know. And so um, I don't like to be judged as if I'm supposed to be perfect either. But honestly, Miss um, G., the way you raised me, I don't care about too much. Ain't too much I care about. Now I'm I am supposed to care about um, how people look at me morally, but let me get one ounce of, uh, of the fact that you just envious or you just a hater, and I don't care about that either. You you know, I done been through too much to to let people's flesh determine how I feel about me. Or what I do. I've been I've been through too much. But morally, yeah, I'm concerned how you feel about about me morally. So if I'm out here acting a fool, you know, showing myself to be um, unworthy of teaching, preaching, I, I do care about that. But I'm not I'm not perfect. You know, meaning I might every once in a while I might let a little word slip through. I go repent. You know, it ain't intentionally. I do talk to the Lord about my mouth, but I'm gonna tell y'all a little secret. When the Lord called me, I was a cursor. And he knew it. And guess what? He changes you. He changes those he calls. Remember that? He does. He does. So every once in a while, if something slip out, I know what to do. I know what to do because God has brought me a mighty long way, especially with this mouth. Well, Ma, you remember when I used to have, have road rage? Remember, <coughs> excuse me, we'd be driving down the road and how ignorant I used to act. Yeah, it's not as bad now as it used to be. What do you mean not as bad? You don't need hardly hearing in the mouth. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but you still get a little upset and then on that. I mean, Minister Love, you still get a little upset. I be listening to you when we're on the phone. And people be, I think, you know what, the devil will use anything 
to bother us. He uh, used anything to upset us. If a car rolled past you and almost bumped your car, then I hear you uh, fussing it out. And I, you know, I find myself driving down the street and people do things that I think is ignorant, mm -hmm. like speeding up on me like I'm going to speed up. How are you talking about? Because I'm thinking to myself, I am not budging. Because I know if you hit me from behind, your insurance going to pay. I just don't want to die in the process of getting injured no more so than what I am. But I'm not going to get a ticket because you are the hair. But, but for I real. I have two lanes on these streets. So, yeah, I be uh, talking to myself. My husband telling me, oh, girl, they, they don't hear you. I know they don't hear me. And I thank God they don't, but they carry guns now. But, yeah, I, I, you still do it a little bit. But you'll be cursing. No, nope, I don't be cursing. That's what I'm trying you to get at. Cursing, but you do be letting them have it. Eh, but I don't be cursing. And that's why you I don't say. don't be cursing, no. No, he, you do not. He does not call the qualify. He qualifies those he calls. That's right. And I can and say. And we have to remember, everybody is not called. Everybody isn't called. And I can say that he has changed me accordingly because I always was like, Lord, please do not. Please don't make me be a Bible total. Y'all know what that is. I, 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 don't make me be that one that come out and point fingers at people and, and tell them they're not living right and, and I always got something to say about somebody else to where I ain't looking at myself. I never, ever desire to be that type of person. Or don't make well, me don't be... Run folks away from the church. Yeah, or don't let me be that one that can't hold a conversation because I'm so busy trying to prove that I'm holy. So everything I say is a Bible scripture. How you doing? Blessed and highly favored. Well, what happened to you the other day where the Lord keep on keeping me? You know what I'm saying? Oh, my goodness, I can't stand talking to y'all. Oh, well. Especially when you know, especially when you know when somebody asks you, and you know you need help, and somebody asks you, how are you doing today? Well, God can bring me through it. Yeah. God will bring you through it. If somebody knows what's wrong with you, he's going to send somebody to help you. But if you want to tell people that God's going to bring you through it, they have no idea that you really need help, and you're going to suffer a little longer. See, God can bring you through it when you admit to what the problem is. Sometimes the person... You already know you're going to have a problem before you have it. But somebody needs to know what the problem is so you can get help. Yeah, because sometimes that be the person asking you what's going on. That's right. That's the person God has sent to hear you confess about your problems. He going to prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Ma'am, could you talk to me? Could you just stop talking the Bible to me? I'm telling you, all if y'all like that, please stop. Please. Please stop. Because people are listening. People say, oh, don't nobody want to hear that. Don't nobody want to hear what you say. They need to complain. Don't nobody want to hear it. No, and you don't want to hear it. And when you hear somebody say, don't nobody want to hear that, that's because they don't want to hear it, but they want to listen to what you have to, you, you to listen to what they have to say, which is most likely worse than what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I be thinking about myself, no, that's what don't nobody want to hear. But I'm going to listen to you just in case the Lord would have me to, to say something that might help you. I'm going to tell but, you like this. I'm the type of person that if I don't want to hear, I'm going to shut you up real quick. I'm going to shut you up real quick. Like, I was walking. I I ain't have, I ain't had much money, y'all. I ain't have much money, but my baby needed something. So I was going to get what he needed, honey. And no, I won't go shoplift. But I was going to get what my baby needed. And so I'm going to the store. And I see this lady. She comes out of a store with a little bag and do. And, um, you know, I got my own woe is me problems. And so I asked her, I said, hey, how are you doing? 
Well, I've been praying. I say them prayers going to work. Believe me. Have a good day. And I moved on out. Because see, what you're not getting ready to do is take these little bit of coins from me that I got for my child. At this moment, he, he was needy. And you were not going to get his coins. And then if you've been praying, you need to believe in those prayers that God is going to bless you. All I asked you was how you doing. You know. And and she tried to tell you, Miss uh-huh, she tried to tell me, but she knew better. And if she didn't know better, she learned real quick. Because, see, this is the thing. Just because people don't look like they're going through, don't mean they're not going through. And that's right. You know, and at that sometimes moment... Sometimes you're better off just saying hi and back. And sometimes... If you really don't want to say it, if you really don't hear what a, what a, hear what a person has to say, or don't have time to hear it, or just don't care, sometimes you better off just say hello, mm -hmm. goodbye, see you. You know, make it short. But when you ask somebody how they're doing, they, they, a lot of times they think you're concerned enough to want to know. Well, she knew I wasn't. She was like, I heard about that time. I was like, oh. <laughs> God, God forgive me. <laughs> she said, uh. <laughs> I don't care. Don't forget it. She'll be the first one to tell her back problems. And she's shunning me off. I ain't shunning her off. I told her the Lord going to answer them prayers. He won't go answer with me with my baby's coins. Every bit well, of them coins is going to my baby. Honey. That's a blessing. That's yes, a blessing. Sir. At that moment, he was in need. I don't play about my chair now. God ain't tell you be stupid. No, wisdom, wisdom works the sermon baby because she just had left out the stove i told you with a nice little bag she had just left out the stove with a nice little bag mm. i guess she was gonna do some some shopping this that day <laughs> no no <laughs> well, I, people Oh, uh -huh. but one thing about love, I'm gonna tell you right now, I am not going to uh, put myself in a in a bind. I'm not gonna put myself in a bind. Now. I'll help you, but the last thing I'm gonna do is put myself in a bind. And if I find myself in a bind, you got to go. You got to go because that ain't what God wanted for me. He didn't want me to be in no bind trying to help nobody. Sometimes, yeah, make a little inconvenience, but not no bind. Not where I'm not going to. I mean, he ain't mean for me not to eat to help you eat. I can't. I, I'm serious now. When, when, when now I'm not talking about those who got and then they just don't help. Because you got a lot of people like that. They have, but they just so selfish. They ain't trying to help nobody else. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the Lord didn't mean for you not to eat. To help somebody else eat, especially able-bodied. Yeah, if you're able to work, you should, you're supposed to work. The word said, man, don't work. Go out and, yes, you're supposed to work. You shouldn't expect nobody to get your back and cold your needs. When you are just as strong, and some of these people are even uh, in better condition than you are. Yeah. And what can I take care of? Yeah. Uh, a lot of can 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 work, but yet they want to be out here in bed. To each his own, but don't ask me. Don't well, ask maybe me. have a good excuse for not giving uh, the corner uh, shakers. A corner pan shakers. Uh -huh. They got a good excuse that to get to them because instead of pulling, they got stands up talking about do not uh, give to the pan handlers. Give it to a. Uh... <laughs> Let me tell you about that. Okay. 
And I ain't gonna stay forever. Lord, they, they my chest not hurt when I say it. That, as much as they standing, they can go work at Amazon. Amazon got jobs where you stay all night long. That's right. And now, see, I can't stand all night long. But if these cats can stand all night long, they go work at Amazon. All day long. In uh -huh. the same spot. In the you right. There are jobs where you can do that. And they can walk the premises all night. Yeah. All day. And, and yeah, there are jobs that they can do, but mentally they might not be able to do it. But they are able to remember to beg. Shoot, some of them get out there and play them instruments and, and stuff like that. Well, I don't mind giving them money because it's entertainment. I know I tried to get that one um that that um that drama on Freddy Boulevard. I tried to get her some money the other day, girl. How about I couldn't find it? I couldn't find the money. I was like, Lord, what, what, what's going on? He ain't never told me not to get nobody nothing. But I couldn't find well, the money. When, huh? One day, I was looking for the guy that I had been getting money to, and I couldn't find it. And some told me to, to turn around and go back the opposite direction. There he was on the court. I blew at him, and he ran to the car. He was so happy to see me. He said, I hadn't been seen nothing all day. That was amazing. Oh. And I came across him. But I ain't looking for nobody to get no money to because I don't have that kind of money to be given. But when the Lord Holy Spirit told me to share, I share. Oh, yeah. But when I don't pay my tax, I feel, if I don't pay my tax, I feel guilty spending my money on stuff that I really didn't need. If oh. I don't pay my tax on a Sunday. Bless your heart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But for real though, if you don't pay your tithe, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Lord, I can't wait to get this thing cut off my face. Well, if you don't pay your tithe, it's going to come out some other way. I know it. And that's the scary part. You don't know how it's going to come out. Yeah, it's going to come out. But I just feel guilty when I don't pay my tithe. So when I give to the homeless or I help somebody, I feel like I'm tired. I tell myself, you're tired and you're giving it to who needs it. Well, it's a, source, it's a source of tithing. It's not the, the, the bring your I know it's tithe that. to the storehouse tithe. Right. It's not going to pay for the church lights. But uh, I'm telling you, it would, it would nitpick at you so bad. But I go out to eat on Saturday and then bring enough money. To eat and pay my tax check. That's something I don't care though. I don't care a lot of money around with me. Exactly. So, and I also get my checkbook. So I'll go out and eat. I'm hungry. I gotta go eat me something. So I go eat with my tax money. And I'm gonna tell you something that just irritates me till I get back to church to pay my tax. It ain't gonna pay and for it. And don't even enjoy the food. It ain't gonna pay so for them guests. For them guests. Uh -huh. the, the guest preachers that come to y'all church. If you get your tax, if you get your tax to somebody else that ain't paying for them guest preachers. <clears throat> well, you know what? Once I get my money, I don't care what they do with it. It's out of my hand. I, I gave them for the right cause. Whatever they do with it, that's on them. That's the textbook answer. <clears throat> Yeah, and I'm going to keep on giving it to anybody that asks. That's a textbook answer. That's a textbook answer. When I get close, let me tell you something. You I ain't got to tell me. I know I preach the same thing. When they pay the light bill, that's what my tax went. That's what I tell myself. I don't know what to do with nobody else's money, but my, my money went towards the right thing. That's what I tell myself. I and it'll be textbook. Any other kind of book. I ain't no need to worry yeah. about it until the lights don't work. Then I'm upset. Don't let them lights go out. And that's when you need to figure out where them ties went. When the I, lights. I, I, I'll worry about it. I'll worry about it. Because I know a lot of people come back to it. And look, a lot of people come back and touch the uh, 
uh, a container, whether you holding a plate or a cup or a blanket, whatever you hold with the ties. Some people just come out with the thing on it like they blasting it. I don't get that. No, that's old school. That's that's when you don't have anything to put in the tiling um, plate. You go by and touch it. That's old Why? school. Why? Because it's supposed to be it's supposed to be your the alternative to not having it. To I get ain't it. seen no way in the word of God. It ain't in the word of it's God. Not. I'm just telling you what I it is. Right. So that's man-made. Keep uh, walk. Keep moving. A lot of stuff, man-made. I know. Keep keep on moving. I ain't touching that. You ain't blessing the plate. And hold it back. You know you got $10. Well, anyhow. Like I told people. But every time I, I pay my tithe. Then I ain't got nothing. I ain't pay my tithe. Like I tell people. You should always have some. Because you're supposed to pay your tithe first. Not last. That's right. If you, take all the, if you get your red bottles. I have to pay your tithe. It might not be fake. See that will happen to a lot of people. You, you, you don't pay your tithe. And then when you. Go out shopping with the money. Somebody put something in their face and you'd have purchased. You'd have spent all that money on their face stuff. And then when you could have paid your tithes and God would have blessed you with the real deal. Perhaps. <laughs> or you realize you didn't need it. That's right. But she was too tight. You know, they didn't fit you when you left the store. So you don't need to see. Say, how are you being punished? But I always ask God to give me that. When I go to church tomorrow, joining the love spot and the love spot at the mat we are gonna try to come and do the radio show live every saturday um with you and then have a you know a little chit chat like we just did and um hope you enjoyed it you take care i got work to do <laughs> <laughs> 